Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Isn't it beautiful? It's absolutely beautiful today. I um, worked an overnight last night. And so I came home and went back to bed for a little bit. But when the sunshine started peeking through the curtains, I just couldn't lay there anymore. It is such a gorgeous, beautiful day. It's not hot. It's not cold. And here in California, there's practically no eclipse. <laughs> we are not in the path. We're nowhere near. I think it's just like a tiny little niblet out of the side. I hope the kids over at the school are uh, outside enjoying if it's time already. Well, I had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. A very good friend gave me a call and said that um, she was down the street at uh, a mobile home park and that they were having an estate sale and I needed to grab my husband and we needed to get down there. <laughs> we went down there. Um, and they had some vintage knives that he, uh, kitchen knives. He loves to cook. He had some kitchen knives and they had a couple of bread books, bread making books. And he picked that up and, um, she had a whole sunroom on the back of her home and it was filled with handicrafts. I know I picked some stuff up and I would love to share it with you. Want to see what I got? So the, I think we walked out of there and we paid like, I don't know. Um, so she said we could fill a bag for 10 bucks. And so at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I can fill a whole bag. <laughs> so modest. I filled that bag. I crammed that bag full of wonderful goodness. And I'd really like to go back. I think there's a few other things that have been bouncing around in my head that I just didn't. Let me show you what I did get before I start complaining about what I didn't get. Pretty big bag. She had a lot of items that were already completed and she had a lot of items that were halfway. Um, huge variety in, in yarn ages. Um, <clears throat> let's see where do we even start like the bag is just all over the place let's start with something new to me so have you ever done um punch needle i was checking out in hobby lobby across from the crochet hooks and crochet notions there's felting and then there's rug kit rug loop loom loop rug kits and then there's a punch needle where you put it on an embroidery hoop i'm not a steady hand in embroidery i've got a maybe a couple of solid stitches and the rest but i love a vintage hook a, a loop a ring loop embroidery hoop it's a hoop <laughs> I love the way they look and I actually have a couple of them that I use as kind of like decoration in my craft corner. But <clears throat> this looks like an exciting kit to try. It's got a variety for the, I think the different weights, size three, five, six, two, short loop adapter. I don't know. <clears throat> I think I need to jump down the YouTube hole and rabbit hole and see what I can find on that. A full kit looking brand new. There is instructions on the back and I read them. Um, it's English. <laughs> we'll see what I could put together. And then since it's in my lap, is that all of them? Sorry. I just get so excited when you come to visit. I don't organize. I don't clean. I don't do anything. I just get excited that you're here. <laughs> there was a box. It says Garden 
G-A-R-D-O-N-E, garden, garden. It says made in Italy, one ounce, 100% cotton. And the color is lovely. It's called 116. Is that not the absolute perfect color for this mustard gold? <laughs> It is not chain spun. It is tightly, loosely wound in a bit of a roving style. It is a cotton that has a thread wrapped around it. Oh, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good. So I was looking at the packaging imported. Um, they're all here in the original shipping box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I just looking at it and holding on to it and kind of squishing it around. It smells like um, grandma's closet, but it doesn't smell. Um, it it doesn't have a negative odor to it. It does not actually say the yardage, but <clears throat> there's quite a bit of yardage there. I can I can do something with this. Um, I have a similar yarn in a white cream and a navy blue, I think, and a green. Not the same brand and definitely not this amount. So if this was enough to do the bulk of an item. I could do trimming and accessories and something complimentary. Picked it up. It fit in the bag. It was coming home. It was just a glorious little find in its little little vintage box. <clears throat> and then um, she had a sewing machine. She had tons of um, boxes of buttons which I resisted because I have quite a few button jars and we need to share to share with other people so that they can have good finds too. <laughs> um, she had lots of sewing needles, coats of arms needles, 25 cents. I picked this up because it's got this awesome plastic backing that I could hang on the wall and just refill this beautiful little netting piece. I thought that was cool. Uh, DMC tapestry needles, brand new, all in there. Um, oh, this was interesting. So this is Prim, P-R-Y-M. Yes, like our awesome new line of hooks that have hit the market. I've had a set of rainbow Prim hooks for a very long time. I absolutely love them. Um, we have white magic thimble. I just grabbed them because there was a bunch of sewing needles in there. Um, the girls and I have been known to just pick up a sewing needle and some thread and just mend something real fast. Um, Clark's. I just thought that that was just an awesome looking, looking package with some good, sharp, clean needles with no rust on them. So I got those. Seems to me like there was some, well, I'm sure there's something else in the bag that we could talk about. There was a couple crochet hooks way down deep in, in the digging. Um, I got some itty bitty steel hooks, a two, um, baits, zero, zero baits, 14 baits, typical, typical. These were not stored upside down, 11, zero. Actually, I might have quite a few of them. The tiny one I was able to find is a 14. Look at that little guy. Isn't it cute? <laughs> that would be perfect for sewing thread. It's got a nice sharp hook. They were not stored upside down, hooked down on themselves because those are not bent or warped. Uh, I picked up an, a classic I hook. Picked up an F. Picked up a J. Need a lot of those. And um, then I grabbed a Susan Bates on accident. Ugh, it's a K Bates. Look at that. I can't work with that. I'm a lefty. <laughs> I'm sure there's left-handed people out there that work just fine with Susan Bates. It's just um, one of those things that we, what would you learn on? What were your training wheels, right? 
And here's a little seven steel hook. Picked them up. Brought them home. Need some spares just in case. Maybe I'll put together a little car kit. I have some adventures coming up, some road trips. One coming up uh, next weekend. Then I found a Tunisian Afghan hook. Look at that. It is a two. So this would work really well for your thinner yarns, your lace weights. I just thought that is such a beautiful little lavender color. It matches my Tap Mama shirt top. So I picked that up. Fun, fun. And, oh, and then this little plastic hook. I'm not a plastic hook person and it's a Bates, but I thought I'm going to put this one and a couple of the other ones that have duplicates, multiple duplicates at this point. I'm going to put them with a couple little tiny balls of yarn and put them in the little free library. Maybe I could print out some very, very simple instructions on how to make a chain. I can go through and see if I can find something um, total layman's terms, just basic, basic and put a little hook, put a little ball of yarn, put a little note of instructions and put it in a Ziploc baggie and make like a little tiny, tiny kit was my intentions. We'll see. We'll see. What can I put together? I'm having so much fun with that little library. <clears throat> oh, I found a doll stand that went in the bag. These are pretty pricey. Went to um, Hobby Lobby to get one. Who? What dolls did I recently? Oh, I got that little Holly Hobby doll. I, well, I was looking for something, but a little Amagurumi ballerina or something cutie pie can go on there. That'll be nice. What else we got? Um, so I'm working on a decades project. Can't tell you what decade. Can't tell you what project it is. Not until October. Um, I can tell you this. I found variegated thread, which is absolutely perfect for making leaves. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> without spoiling anything or telling you too much. Isn't that the perfect foliagey green? We got a uh, light spring green down into a dark, deep camo underbrush. Well, that tells you a good color. Got some good green in there. She had tons and tons of threads, but my little rack is filled and I, I'm trying to have little bits around when I need just little accent colors, but not full projects, I'll go buy one. <clears throat> I'll go buy a whole, cause I want it all to match same colorway, same everything. <clears throat> we have some makes. I saw these pot holders. This is definitely made with the thread. Um, this is an interesting thread. It's a burgundy and then it has like a pastel rainbow going through it. Not that she held these pastel rainbow with it, but they had such a huge variety in colors of thread. I, I feel like sometimes with the different brands, there's just not a lot of variety. And this is a very loose loop that she crocheted over. This is um, two pieces, probably starting in the middle working up some shells and then she did some beautiful surface stitching between the chaining between the shells. There's the back side. And we got two of them, some beautiful little puff stitches in the middle of that star. Lots of chaining in this one. And the tedious part is that she made two of the same pattern so she could put them together. I always get one done and then I'm like, next. <laughs> I noticed on this one, she did surface crochet. She did down the side, looped around and came back up, which gave this beautiful little double braid accent. Beautiful. I love these. This was a lot of work. This is thread. This is one of those little steel hooks. This is, this is a treasure. I'm gonna treasure these. Don't know if she's out there somewhere, but I appreciate the hard work that went into those. The pattern searching, the fiber searching, the, the hours sitting with a hook under a bright light, right? <laughs> you gotta have a bright light when you're working that small. 
and I picked up a doily. She had tons of doilies. I picked up this one because it has the little mini pineapples off the sides. Look, they look like little, um, little acorns. How cute is that? Beautiful sun center. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to starch it and put it on my coffee table. I picked up this one. Oh, it's beautiful in the sun, isn't it? This one has tons of detail work. Nice flower in the middle working its way out. And at the end, there are these little, little bell loops. And at first I thought she tacked them together with a little slip stitch to pucker them. And at first I thought, oh, it needs to be, um, needs to be blocked and they need to be brought out and it needs to be nice and straight. But looking at it nice and straight, that's not what she intended at all. She intended for that, for that ruffle to be tucked over itself. And when I tuck it back over itself, there's the two. It makes a bell, like a little flower at the end of it. What a lovely little feature. When I block this one, I'm gonna um, unfold them and then fold them back so that they're the same amount all the way around. Makes that nice little bobbly edge, a little popcorn edge. Very, very nice. I love it, love it. Did I get, no, 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 that's the same one. <laughs> Put it back on my lap. And then, she was an angel lady. She loved her angels, and I found this tiny little doily. It's a three-dimensional angel. It doesn't have to be on a Christmas tree. I think it's lovely. It looks like the body was worked up in a cone shape. And then reattaching your yarn, working the, the ruffled sleeves all the way around, giving five scallops. And then she attached the head on the top with a tiny bit of little cotton in there, a little cotton ball. I looked up a few tutorials on YouTube. I found a very similar pattern that I will put in the description box below. It is definitely not the exact same pattern that she made. She had these hanging from her drapes in her living room and she had them all through the craft room with all different kinds of yarn. I think this would be an incredible item to have in the Little Free Library. Just a tiny bit of thread and a whole lot of patience. Adorable. That was fun. And then I found my very own Lollipop Lane Dumplin' doll, Dumplin' Design doll. Look, Alana, crochet with Alana. If you want to see some cute, adorable little dolls emerge from a ball of yarn, Alana has the whole line. I am so, you are so cute. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's the yellow one. So in looking, there's um, Lollipop with the candy line. Dumplin Designs, Dumplin Designs created both. One is desserts and pastries and the other ones is, the other one, the other line is candy. And I think it was, I want to say lemon meringue pie, but now I was searching back on eBay really quick for the pattern because now I need a pattern. Um, I didn't see lemon meringue pie, but I saw bubble gum. She has bright yellow hair. The other yellow girl had a more of a light, yellow not sure but rabbit hole of research so i was so excited to see baby's face peeking out of all those remnants of quilting fabric i did not do a hair test i know right will you do a hair test with me so the hair test is sometimes our vintage dolls or our yarn items um sometimes with sun and seasons and warm and cold and being tossed around roughly by non-fiber lovers. Sometimes the fibers get a little delicate and frail and they break off and really difficult to restring or repurpose. 
Sometimes the plastics get gummy or sticky. Your little hand is perfect. I love you. <laughs> Their little hands are perfect. So Alana shows us how to um, take something warm and um, poke through so that you can sew through those little arms. And according to Mama Lama Kayla, we can use our hot glue guns, which is what I might be doing. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're even cuter in person. I just want to ruffle your hair, but I don't want fibers to go everywhere. Hey, kuda pie. Let's see. <gasps> we're nice and we're soft. We're not, um, we're not brittle. Oh, and you smell like a baby. Well, a baby that's lived in the closet. Who does that? got baby dolls bring them out let them see the light of day and the sunshine and everything oh your hair is so cute yes so it's not brittle um kind of coming apart a tiny bit but who knows how old this baby is and it's been sitting in a bag for quite a while do we have a date stamp on the back of your neck no do you have we got an empty head for a clown baby, that's probably typical. Oh, your hair comes up a bit. Do we have a stamp? No. So I will probably, I see a little glue line up there. I could probably give that a little glue and rearrange it. This was an amazing find and I am really excited to make a baby doll. You can hang out with my Cabbage Patch babies. They have so much clothes. I, I have a basket full of diapers and clothes and and I haven't really made any more outfits for them, but I got three more outfits to make. You can't make your new child a brand new crocheted outfit and not make one for your existing twin babies, right? <laughs> I don't need any of these creepy dolls getting jealous of each other in my closet. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> so, got that project to work on. Back in the bag tons of treasures. I had fun. I had fun talking to the lady about, um, I guess her, um, the woman's sister was there and her daughters were there and, um, talked to them a little bit about, um, their crafting journeys and things that they, that they enjoy doing. Um, of course the women had first pick over, uh, fun stuff and everything else they were happy to see to go to a new home that would enjoy them and love them and share it with all of you. So did that this weekend. Um, the quail are outside. They're in their big quail pen. Um, they're doing great. Um, it's been nice and sunny and beautiful. And uh, oh, my Bonnie babe came in the house yesterday for a little bit. She helped me pick some scrap yarns to do some little bookmarks that I put out in the Little Free Library. I found a pattern for just two little leaves and then a string bookmarks. And then I put a little um, heart pony bead at the bottom of it just to give it a little weight at the bottom. Put three of those out there yesterday. Don't know if they're still out there. I'll have to go look. I have tons of tiny little amigurumi still to filter through. Um, have to be patient. <laughs> Uh, haven't had any more postings or sharings on Instagram yet, but that was just a little part of the fun. The fun part was putting the item out there and then waiting for someone to come take it home with them, right? To the sharing, right? The randomness and excitement of leaving something for someone to pick up. That's not trash. <laughs> so I did that. Um... Oh, on Saturday, I went to the fair website and made sure that all of my items were registered and paid for. They are. Um, I put a bag together with a few items that I did. Uh, I can hear the chickens out there. I did put a um, few items in the bag. I still have to tie in the ends on the blanket. And I need to get my Dia de los Muertos doily out of the closet and put that in the bag and then that bag is completely ready to go and i will take them to the fair and officially submit them in person in hand um the last part of may and maybe you can go with me that would be really fun to go to the fairgrounds and 
I don't think there's any fun or activity going on that day, but maybe we can get some sneak peek at some other items that people are submitting in line. <laughs> Is that cheating? <laughs> it's fun. Thank you. Thank you for visiting with me today. And I hope to see you again really, really soon. Take care and tell me what you're working on. Come on, share with me. Leave a comment below. I'd love to know what you're working on today and what stitch you're using. Is it a endless single crochet and really, really small hook? Or is it a big fat blanket, six, seven weight yarn and a big old grande hook? <laughs> Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.